It's that time. Time for our daily geek out. It's weather for weather geeks time here. The Mahoney and Shenango Valley's most uh, in-depth, detailed, and geeky weather forecast video. No shortage of things to talk about again this evening uh, with harsh cold settling into the valley. I, I did uh, a few minutes worth of live TV at the beginning of the 6 o'clock news this evening uh, outside. Uh, I had to have one bare hand to control my phone, which I control the graphics with. And I can't use a glove in my phone, so my hand was exposed to the wind and the cold, and it was numb after just a few minutes. I could hardly use it for a couple of minutes until I uh, warmed back up. It was awfully cold out there. I want to start this evening not with our local weather, but with our big nor'easter. Uh, this is a 12-hour loop off the infrared satellite showing just a beautiful, beautiful storm, just a textbook storm. This is the kind of storm that... Uh, you know, makes its way into meteorology, meteor, <laughs> meteorology textbooks. Sometimes that word just doesn't want to slide out real easily. Uh, weather textbooks. And uh, this produced heavy amounts of snow and coastal flooding and all sorts of problems as expected from the Carolinas up through the mid-Atlantic states and into New England as well. It was, uh, it was a blizzard for a time, especially on Long Island and uh, over towards Rhode Island, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, Cape Cod area. Uh, really, really nasty weather for them earlier on today. Now, with our recent cold weather, of course, the ice has been expanding on the Great Lakes, especially on Lake Erie, the shallowest of the uh, Great Lakes, and especially the western end of Lake Erie is fairly shallow. So that's always where we see the ice really becoming uh, concentrated first. The amount of open water with absolutely no ice continues to shrink, and that's already having an impact on our weather somewhat. Uh, the lake effect would probably be a bigger deal over the next 24 to 36 hours if the lake were still ice free. But we are going to see still some lake effect flurries and snow showers on a few occasions right into uh, parts of the day on Saturday. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in this video, of course. Temperature trend has not been our friend over the last uh, 20 hours, uh, especially over the last handful of hours. I'll get out of the way here and show you that as of 7 o'clock, we're down to 8 at the airport after bobbing around in the lower teens for most of the afternoon today. And the wind chills have followed suit. Wind chills earlier on today were a few degrees below zero, but now we're down to 10 below zero as of 7 p.m. at the Youngstown Warren Airport. Let's talk wind chills for the next couple of days. All right, some pretty brutal numbers here. Let me fast forward to tomorrow morning. This is the reason why most of the schools are closed tomorrow. Look at these wind chills tomorrow morning. You know, especially if the sky clears out a little bit. I don't think it'll go completely clear in a lot of places, but if, if the sky clears enough, temperatures drop low enough, and with winds 10 to 15 miles per hour, you can get wind chills 20 to 25 below in some spots, and we're not going to see much of a recovery tomorrow afternoon. I mean, afternoon wind chills tomorrow probably still between 10 and 15 below, and then we're right back in that 18 to 20 below range in a lot of places for Saturday morning with air temperatures below zero. When we're talking about wind speeds of 10 to 15 miles per hour and air temperatures zero to five below, you can pretty easily get wind chills in the 15 to 20 to 25 below zero range. And frostbite can occur in 10 to 30 minutes. And you know, I didn't get frostbite out there this evening. I wouldn't be outside that long. Um, but I could tell already that my hand was really getting hard to, to uh, do anything with after only five or six minutes outside in the elements here in downtown Youngstown a couple of hours ago. So uh, if your exposed skin, if your skin is exposed, I should say for 15 minutes, a half an hour to that, frostbite is a real, real possibility. So one of those things, common sense applies, uh, and that applies not only to you, but your pets as well. Uh, and if you're watching this video, chances are that you have enough common sense that uh, you're not going to leave your pets outside in this kind of weather. But unfortunately, we see Many people who make that choice, unbelievably, uh, as a dog owner, I just I have such a hard time understanding uh, that mentality. But anyway, on to the, the uh, weather tomorrow. I think tomorrow, the wind trajectory tomorrow it becomes a little more west-northwest instead of northwest, and that's going to keep a lot of the snow showers and flurries confined to areas north of I-80 or around and north of I-80 for tomorrow. Same idea tomorrow night, same idea heading into the day on Saturday. Uh, especially in the morning hours, could still be some lingering snowflakes, especially north of Youngstown up into Trumbull and Mercer counties. Now, from now through Friday night, uh, they'll do pretty well up in the primary snow belt. Uh, Geauga County, parts of Ashtabula County, heading over towards Meadville and Crawford County, and then up into Erie County, PA. 
I, locally, you know, I don't think this is much of a story for a lot of people, although there can still be a sneaky few inches worth of snow between now and Friday night in places such as Greenville, Sandy Lake, New Lebanon, Kinsman, Mesopotamia, etc. Wouldn't be surprised if someone in that zone gets three or more inches, but for a lot of us, coating to an inch or two or three, maybe at the most, um, is a possibility. But, you know, it only takes a little dusting when it's this cold outside a half an inch to make things really really slick every flake sticks road treatment doesn't work real well you get the idea don't focus too much on if you're going to get a half an inch or an inch and a half worth of snow no matter how much you get it's going to be slick in some spots right through tomorrow night so road impacts uh, low for a lot of places tonight uh, getting a little more moderate as you head off to the north tomorrow i really don't expect too many road issues um say from 224 on south so anyone heading down 45 or 46 uh, down Route 11 into Columbiana County, 14, should be okay. Nothing more than really just a flurry or two uh, for a lot of Columbiana County tomorrow. But those uh, snow showers can continue to make things slick along 422 up in Trumbull County, Route 7, Route 11, heading over into uh, the uh, central and northern sections of Mercer County, including I-80. Just going to have to watch for some slick spots during the course of your Friday and heading into Friday night and even into parts of Saturday as well all right our next snow chance uh no rest for the weary here this is not going to be lake effect this is a general snow coming our way this is with a warm front believe it or not uh, coming our way sunday night and heading into the day on monday a little wave of low pressure along a front is going to bring us a period of snow it looks like this can make things slick for monday morning i can't rule out some sleet perhaps trying to mix in with this uh, over the last couple of days i thought maybe we'd get warm enough for some rain on Monday, I'm starting to lean against that and think that it'll either be just straight snow or snow perhaps mixed with a little sleet. Now, this does not look like a big storm to me. Could be enough to shovel. It's possible. Certainly enough to make things a little bit slick for uh, at least the first half of the day coming up on Monday. Then that'll push away later Monday and into Monday night. Uh, let's uh, talk about the longer range because I do have some good news there. Uh, to check out the next 10 days versus average. The modeling has really started to warm things up for a few days next week. Boy, are the car wash is going to be packed next week. Uh, we're talking three straight days of above average temperatures. Our average high is 32 next week. We could get up into the mid 40s a week from today on Thursday. Doesn't that sound nice? That'll probably be followed by a colder shot at the end of next week and into next weekend. But, you know, I showed you this last night in case you watched uh, this video last night. The longer range, like two weeks from now, looks really mild compared to average. Check out this uh, map for two weeks from today, the uh, 18th of the month, showing a big blob of warmer than average temperatures across the Great Lakes, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley. If this comes to fruition, and I do think it will, uh, this will be a nice reward after a really rough end of December and first week to 10 days of January. All right, thanks for watching as always. I'll see you tomorrow evening for a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks, and I'll have an update on the roads and the radar and everything else you need to know tonight on 21 News at 11 o'clock. See you then.